Romans chapter 7 is one of those rare instances where Paul gives us some of his personal insight. Now we know over there in uh, 1 Corinthians when he gets to talk about that thorn in the flesh, he gives us some of his insight. But here he gives us some of the real Apostle Paul. You see, over the years, Brother Clint, uh, we have made heroes of these uh, individuals in the Bible. And by the way, if you're going to give your kids heroes, give them Bible people's heroes. Uh, you don't have to worry about them going on strike and uh, complaining about them playing time and all that stuff, huh? But uh, what we've done is we've glorified these Bible people to elevate them to statures that we can never attain to. But the beauty of the Bible is it shows God used imperfect people to do great things. And the Apostle Paul did not walk on water. He did not have a halo. He had troubles just like you and I. And in chapter 7, we get some insight to some of the, what Paul dealt with. And this is one of the greatest tongue twisters that has ever been pinned down. So I'm going to read it slowly uh, as not to mess it up. But look in with me in verse 18. Uh, Paul is pinning this down under inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly do give you the praise and the glory you so richly deserve for being the great God you are. Lord, we thank you for the good song service we've enjoyed. Thank you for the old rugged cross. Lord, I'm thankful I've been to Calvary. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that Satan can only come so far. Lord, we're thankful you are truly the dearest friend we've ever had. And God, you certainly are worthy of praise for when the accusations of the accuser, the brethren, fly our way, mercy steps in. And God, you are worth all the hallelujahs we could ever muster up. God, we're thankful for the good testimonies. We're thankful, Lord, you hear and answer prayer. We're thankful for the Word of God. Now, Lord, on this cold Monday night, we're thankful these folks have a desire to be in the house of God. Lord, I pray you'd bless them. I pray you'd elevate them to higher planes even tonight. I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that, Lord, for the next few minutes, you'd arrest the attention of our minds. May we truly... And put our all into what you say and what you do. Lord, I pray, as Brother Ron's already prayed, if there's somebody here tonight lost without God, I pray you'd reveal their lost condition. And God, I pray we'd see them birthed into the family of God. I pray if there's anyone cold and indifferent on God, Lord, I pray that, Lord, tonight uh, the uh, chains of complacency would fall from their hearts. We'd see them, Lord set on fire for God. I pray if there's any prodigal sons or daughter in the pig pens, I pray they'd remember the Father tonight. And God, we certainly pray for the choices, saint of God. God, you do something special for them. Lord, we need you. We pray for your help, your power, your anointing, your touch. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you accomplished. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Here we find the Apostle Paul uh, expounds very eloquently the fact that we have two natures. You got saved by the good grace of God. You got sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, 
And thanks be unto God, he took up resident in your life, uh, and now you have a spiritual nature you never had before. Uh, uh, when you was lost, you was dead in trespasses and sins, uh, but he hath quickened you by the Spirit of God and made you alive. Uh, and now you have a spiritual nature, uh, and you have that old atomic nature, that fleshly nature, uh, and there's a constant battle. Uh, all the time. Uh, there are times you know there are things you should do, uh, but instead of doing what you should do, uh, what the Spirit is beckoning you to do, uh, you mind the flesh and you do those things you shouldn't do. Uh, and there are times you know there are things you should run from. Uh, the Spirit says, don't go that direction, uh, but you mind the flesh uh, and you go after it anyway. Uh, and we have these two natures. Uh, 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 the inward nature uh, is constantly trying to give God glory from your life uh, and the old fleshly nature uh, is trying to take you back to where you was before you got saved uh, and it's a constant battle I heard one preacher say one time it's like having two big old junkyard dogs the one you feed the most will be the strongest you know why we need revival on a regular basis because we don't eat enough bread from heaven feeds that inward man It'll increase your faith, and it'll cause you to be able to put that outward man under subjection. Can I say that's the plight of the Christian life, learning to put your outward man in subjection to the inward man, letting God have first place in your life. Well, I want you to notice a few things about these verses that we read. I want you to notice Paul's awareness. Look at verse number 18. He says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And my dear friend, it would be a great day in your life when a light bulb goes off in your head and you will become aware of the fact that in you is no good thing. Hmm? It is a dangerous thing as a child of God when you think you can handle it. Can I say, a lot of folks have messed up their lives uh, uh, thinking they can get uh, uh, so close to the flames and not get burnt. Uh, friend, that's not the case. Uh, 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 my dear friends, the best thing to do is to shun it, uh, avoid it, uh, run from it, uh, have nothing to do with it. Because, uh, uh, friend, the closer you get, uh, the more attractive it becomes. Mm. He's aware that in him dwells no good thing. You think you can handle it, friend. The Lord's just liable to show you how big a fool you really are. Mm -mm. You can't handle it. Mm -mm. Let me just say this. There are far greater people in the Bible than we would have ever become. And they couldn't handle it. And if they couldn't handle it, we can't handle it. Mm -mm. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. David blew it. Solomon was raised in David's house, the wisest man that ever lived. And before he died, he's offering up uh, sacrifices to idols. He blew it. Uh, uh, Samson uh, uh, was ordained of God from his mother's womb, uh, and he blew it. Uh, and how long have you got tonight? We go on and on and on and on. Uh, uh, God didn't call you and I a man or woman after his own heart. Uh, uh, God didn't ordain us from our mother's wombs. Uh, God didn't do uh, uh, great things uh, uh, in our intellect like he did Solomon uh, uh, but hey my dear friends a good good you're a way ahead of them if you become aware of the fact you can't handle it Paul went on to write when I'm weak then am I strong when you realize Lord I can't then he steps in he takes over we see the awareness now I want you to notice the allurements look at verse 21 he said, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delighted the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Paul says that, hey, my inward man delights after the things of God, but there is another law. It's a law of allurement. It's a law that grabs my attention and wants to attract me to things of this world. Can I say, I'm not much of a fisherman. My dad and I used to fish when I was younger. 
My dad had more tackle. We had two garages, and one of them was the fishing garage. This garage had nothing but tackle in it. One side of the garage was tackle for Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, anywhere in the U.S. The other side of the garage was big fish. It was Canada or down in the, uh, the ocean. My dad taught me a little bit about fishing. I never had much to do with fishing because I'm not a patient person. Give me a ball, give me a hoop, give me something I can throw or shoot, I'm good. Sitting there waiting for a fish to come and jump on my line, not so good with that, huh? But my dad had these, boy, I wish I had them today because they're worth a fortune. He used to have them little red devil spinners. Those red devil spinners, they'd be red and white on one side and they'd be chrome on the other side. And those things, they'd hit the water, uh, and my dad would use an open bail, uh, and he'd reel that thing in and that spinner going through the water, uh, and it's a flipping, uh, and it's a shiny, uh, and it becomes attractive to them dumb fish. Uh, uh, they run up there and jump on it, and then before you know it, they're in the boat. Uh, 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 what I'm trying to tell you, uh, uh, the devil's got shiny things. Uh, he's got painted up things. Uh, he's got pretty things, uh, and he knows how to uh, uh, flip them out there right in front of you uh, and if you're not careful uh, he'll have you hooked uh, and he'll have you in his boat my dear friends uh, can I say he's got pleasures and there's sin there's pleasure in sin for a season mm. and I want to tell you something sinning's fun but it's not fun for long because there's a payday that comes huh you talk to Christian. Everybody he arrests, they was having a good time till he showed up. Mm. There's pleasures out there the devil attracts you with. He'll allure you with pursuits. Can I say there's nothing wrong with having goals in your life? I remember about uh, uh, 20 years ago, that became a big thing. you got to set goals for your life. Uh, uh, your children had to set goals in school. Uh, you had to set goals, things you want to attain. Uh, then they said, uh, take a picture of it. Put it on your refrigerator because that's where you go the most anyway. Uh, every time you look at it, uh, uh, it'll remind you of your goal, what you need to work for, and what you need to work for. Uh, listen, there's nothing wrong with having goals. Uh, why don't you set some spiritual goals? Uh, why don't you want to become more spiritual uh, I'm going to read more of the Bible uh, uh, today than I did yesterday I'm going to pray more uh, I'm going to seek God more uh, we don't set them kind of goals uh, but I got news for you uh, the devil's got some pursuits out there uh, and there's nothing wrong with pursuing things uh, until your pursuit overtakes you uh, and it takes you down a wrong road uh, where you uh, forfeit the things of God for your goals my dear friends uh, there are pursuits out there. I've seen people used to be faithful in church till they got a pursuit after a boat, till they got a pursuit after a campsite, till they got a pursuit after a, a big old house, and then they had to work all the overtime they could to pay for it. Uh, till they got pursuit for little Johnny or little Susie to become a professional athlete. Hmm. Let me ask you a question right now. Let me just say, I'm just going to be middling right now. How many of you personally have known somebody's child that went on to become a professional athlete? Anybody? Brother Clint. You don't count. I know Corey Ferris. Didn't last long, though, did he? Best athlete I saw. What I'm trying to say is there wasn't a whole lot of hands going up. But you, go, you drive by a ball field on Saturday. Mm. Preacher, we can't have revival meeting. We got too many uh, ball games going on. We got too many uh, events going on. We got too many of this going on, too many of that going on. You know what kids used to do? Chores. Kids, look at me. Google it. Chores. Huh? And parents... Quit giving them $20 bills. Give them chores and give them an allowance. That'll help them. 
These kids are, they're grumbling up here, parents. You're doing a bad job. They're saying, what's an allowance? Google that too, all right? Let me help you with something. There ain't nobody in this building that loved ball more than I loved ball or played ball more than I played ball. Ask my Aunt Lance. She's sitting right back there. Huh? You didn't see me without a ball glove. Huh? But ask me how many church services I missed because of ball. Thank you, Phil. See, we, we didn't, we didn't mm, play ball when it's church time. There was a lot of times, as a matter of fact, we had church on Saturday night too, ask her. There's a lot of times I went to church on Saturday night in my ball uniform, but I was in church. Hmm? Let me help you with something here. I'm just medlining preaching yet. I'm just still on pursuits. Let me help you with something right here. Kids, ask me how many games I got to play if I didn't make the honor roll. Zero. I didn't play ball if I wasn't on the honor roll. Straight A's or no ball? Guess who had straight A's? So I didn't miss any games. I'm just trying to tell you, you parents, you have so babyfied these kids. Why don't you give them some real goals? Huh? Why don't you give them some spiritual goals about church and then reward them with ball and reward them with things? Why don't you give them some classroom goals? You want to play ball? Get straight A's. Hmm? You don't do your homework? You miss three weeks of ball. Guess what? They'll do their homework. But here's the thing. You can't say it, parents. You've got to do it. I knew what my mom and dad meant when they said, you don't make the honor roll, you don't play. Well, that was nowhere in my notes. Nowhere, but that didn't cost you anything. Are you okay? Let me come out here and see. Let me see. Let me check your pulse, Fred. You okay? Oh, yeah, you're all right. You all right, Aiden? Huh? Xander, you okay, buddy? You still awake? All right. They're good. They're good, parents. Little preaching didn't hurt them. They're okay. But Satan, he's got pursuits, and there's nothing wrong with pursuits uh, as long as you have godly pursuits that rule your life. And can I say he's got projects? Hmm. I hate this time of year. Miss Nett's already talking about planting trees and planting flowers. I hate it. I had to order a tool last night to plant flowers with. I'm like, oh, what a blessing, huh? But you know what? When it comes time to put them things in the ground, guess who's going to be out there doing it? Because I love her, and she loves them flowers. So I'm going to do it. We always got projects. But you see, the devil's projects will take you away from the house of God. It'll take you away from your Bible reading. It'll take you away from uh, 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 witnessing, telling folks about Jesus. Uh, 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 he's got projects for you. They're real shiny, real attractive. Uh, can I say this? He's got passions out there. Mm. Oh, yeah. There's things out there you can fall in love with. Isn't it amazing? A 10 and 6 football team turns a city upside down. Hmm. They're still wearing orange and black all over here. We was coming up the road the other day, Miss Net and I, and I saw there was somebody lost a Bengals cap out there on, on 237. I thought, oh boy, somebody's in mourning today. They have their hats out there on the, on the highway. Uh, see, if you're not careful, you'll become passionate about things other than God. He's got hooks. Boy, they'll get you. Uh, I've known people miss, miss church for a deer stand. Hmm? Uh, then they'll say, well, uh, we, we need to eat, preacher. And then they end up giving all the meat away. They're not eating it. They're wanting something to hang on their wall. Huh? Well, I'm really, really stirring it up now, isn't it? I'm talking about the Lord. I'm preaching truth whether you like it or not. I really don't care. He's got allurements out there. He's got persons. Mm. You be, better be careful who you cast your affection on. Mm. Uh. You know, Samson would have never got in trouble if he'd have taken him a Jewish bride. 
No, he wanted one of them Philistine chicks. Huh? And then uh, he didn't just want some of them Philistines. He wanted the top one. He wanted Delilah. Huh? Are you listening? The devil's always got one out there that looks pretty or looks handsome, got muscles, got this, got that, and got everything. If their heart's not right with Jesus, run from them. And let me help you with something, young people. Let me go over here. I picked on the boys. Let me pick on the girls. If he won't come to church with you, you don't need him. You don't need him. Huh? I've seen too many times, well, uh, 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 we'll get married and then they'll start coming to church. No, 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 no. What happens 95% of the time, the one out of church drags one in church, out of church with them. Huh? You can put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. Uh, hey, uh, uh, if they're not willing to come to church and go all in with Jesus, you don't need them, friend. Uh, uh, the devil is alluring you to a world of heartache, uh, a world uh, uh, of brokenness, uh, a world of disaster. Uh, hey, you better hang in there with the Lord. He deals with awareness. He deals with allurements, but then he deals with admittance. Look what he admits in verse 24. He said, O wretched man that I am, exclamation point, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Um, Paul says, O wretched man that I am, you see, we have been so programmed by Oprah, by Dr. Phil, by Joe Olstein, by Delilah at night. Three people know who she is. Uh, Got to get that love song, Tommy. <laughs> Dedicated from San Francisco to Brother Tommy. We have been so programmed that we are victims, that our self-worth is invaluable, and that you are so special that you deserve to be first in your life. Now let me help you something. You are loved more than you know what love is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God is love. You are loved. And you are worth more than the whole world. For the Bible says what profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. But make no mistake Yours, mine, and everybody else that's breathing God's airs today, our flesh is sorry, no good, rotten, and disgusting. Paul said, dealing with our outer man, O oh, wretched man that I am. Now I know your self-worth, you think you're really worth something, but we're all just wretched. Hmm? Huh? That word rich or wretched means very miserable. I want to tell you, outside of Christ, that's all we are. Hmm? Means sunk into deep affliction or distressed from want, anxiety, or grief. I've never seen a time where everybody's full of anxiety. Hmm? I mean, I wish I'd invented Xanax. I'd be a rich man, huh? There's people popping that stuff like crazy just to deal with life. You know why? Because we're wretched. Hmm? Huh? Means very poor. Outside of Christ, we're as poor as you can get, huh? Means despicable. Outside of Christ, that's what we are. We're the off sky of the world. We're, we're uh, 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 in the gutters of life. It means hatefully vile. That's what we are outside of Christ. Filthy, vile. Means contemptible. That's what we are. Wretched. No wonder uh, the old songwriter wrote, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that God would save a wretch like me. Amen. 
But as we come to church, Brother Tyler, and we've learned to dress this old flesh up. We've learned to put a little cologne on. We've learned to uh, part our hair. We've learned to uh, uh, shake our hands and uh, say amen. We get to thinking we're something when we're nothing. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Never lose sight of the fact we're just wretched. That's what I want to preach on. Thinking about all the allurements, all the attractions, every shiny thing the devil's got that he throws our way. And thinking about that we're nothing but wretches. I want to preach on the wretch who didn't fetch. The wretch who didn't fetch. Huh? You know, if you get a ball, you just get a, a stick and throw it in front of a dog, the dog go fetch it. Huh? Here, Fido, here, Fido, woo. Huh? I've seen some of these boys do that with the chicken leg. Here, 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 throw it. They'll go get it. Huh? Huh? They'll go fetch it. Hmm? Well, there's a lot of folks. The devil shows something shiny in front of them, something, and throw it out there. They'll go after it. They'll fetch it. Huh? But Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Listen, uh, uh, the apostle Paul admits uh, 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 in his flesh dwell no good thing. Uh, but he also said, uh, hey, when God saved me, he changed me. Uh, and there's some things the devil's thrown out there I didn't fetch. Uh, I've learned uh, to let that inward man uh, control the wretched man. Uh, and what a blessing. Uh, the wretch don't have to fetch. Uh, I've got good news for you. Uh, you don't have to shipwreck your life. Uh, you can can live in victory. Uh, you can have joy unspeakable, full of glory. Uh, you can have a shout. Uh, hey, you can have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Uh, hey, uh, you can live above the rudiments of this world. Uh, you can be the envy of angels. Uh, you can be uh, 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 one that uh, uh, kicks Satan in the head. Uh, you can, can, can rise above what you really are. So how can a wretch not fetch? It's real easy. First of all, the wretch that didn't fetch didn't fetch because of his devotion for the Savior. When Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he fell in love with Jesus. The rest of his life, whether he was being beaten whether he was being stoned, uh, whether he was being let down out of the city by rope because they was about to kill him, uh, uh, whether he was left dead in the city uh, 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 only to rise back up, uh, whether he was imprisoned, uh, whether or not he was on the ship getting ready to be shipwrecked, uh, it didn't matter. Uh, one thing did not deter. Uh, Paul was lo in love with Jesus and was devoted to Jesus. Uh, hey, uh, you know how to help your life? Uh, quit looking around uh, and start looking up uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, uh, start becoming devoted to him. Uh, hey, when he becomes your first thought, uh, your last thought, uh, many of thoughts of your day, uh, uh, when you just say uh, on a regular basis, Jesus, I love you. Uh, hey, when you're in love with him, uh, hey, you won't fetch after the, the devil's attractions. Done told you I hate uh, digging flowers, but I'll be digging flowers. Why? Because I love that little brunette back there. Hmm? I want to tell you something. When you love Jesus, the things your flesh hates, you'll learn to put under subjection because of your devotion for Him. Huh? Yeah. You won't have to fetch what Satan's thrown out there. Say, but I'm a wretch. But you don't have to fetch. How can I keep from fetching? Be devoted to the Savior. Not only that, uh, because of Paul's discipline for the Scriptures. In one place, uh, I believe it's over there in 2 uh, Timothy chapter 4, he tells them to bring the parchments. What, what's he talking about? He's talking about the Scriptures. He had a discipline for the Scriptures. Uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, who was of the Sanhedrin Council, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, uh, had the uh, uh, first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, committed to memory. Uh, why do you think God used Paul to preach to the Gentiles? Uh, he knew the book better than anybody on the planet. Uh, but hey, he never arrived. He still wanted the Scriptures. Uh, when you get disciplined to read the Word of God, uh, when you get disciplined to study the Word of God, uh, when you get disciplined to memorize the Word of God, uh, 
when you spend your life in the Word of God, you will find there's nothing out there worth following after, friend. Uh, who needs Hallmark when you got the greatest love story ever written? It's called the Word of God. You know how I, got, I know God wrote this book? Because God shows all the imperfections of man. If man wrote it, it would tell you how good man is. Mm. What a blessing. The problem with the average independent fundamental Baptist isn't because the devil made you do it. It's because you've not been in the book. You have no discipline when it comes to the Word of God. All I got to do is call out one of them minor prophets preached on Jonah last night. It took somebody 10 minutes to find it. Mm. It's because you don't know where it's at. You don't spend time there. Or all you do is stay in the Psalms. Thank God for them Psalms. Sometimes they need uplifted. But sometimes we need law. Sometimes we need Ephesians. We need grace. Uh, you need the whole counsel of the Word of God. I've seen in times gone by, if I announce we're going to do a study on Revelation, boy, they'll bring every neighbor, they'll bring every, they want to know about the end times. Uh, why are we concerned about things that's going to happen when we're not even here? Why are we concerned about the nasty now and now? The wretch won't fetch when he's got a discipline for the Scriptures. Can I say this? The wretch don't fetch when he knows how to discern the Spirit. Brother Mike, you're a wise man. You pastored a bunch of churches a lot of years. How in the world can we ever get people to see it the way God intends for them to see it? There are some people who just don't get a clue. Some don't care. It's not... I don't know how to explain it. I just don't know. Other than this, either you've got it or you don't. Pete Rose had 4,256 hits in Major League Baseball. Pete Rose was the greatest hitter that ever held a ball bat. Pete Rose was the worst hitting coach there ever was. He couldn't teach somebody else how to hit because he just came natural to him. I can't teach you how to discern the Spirit because it just came natural to me. I got born again, started studying the Scriptures, and all of a sudden I started hearing a still small voice. And uh, the Lord speaks, and I've learned when it's Him speaking and it's Him not speaking. Some of you have been sitting in this church for years. You don't have a clue when God's moving and when He's not. I don't know how to help you other than tell you you need to get devoted to Him, disciplined in that book because you've got a real problem because you're moving when it ain't time to move and you're not moving when it is time to move. Hmm? I saw something in revival last week that vexed my soul. The Lord was moving in the service. Folks were starting to worship Brother James and somebody moved out of turn and killed it. And if I t told the situation, it would destroy that person because that person thought they was just worshiping, but they weren't. They grieved the Holy Ghost. You know why? Liberty is not a license. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Just because you have liberty don't mean that God wants you to do something. A lot of times we take liberty because we can't discern the Spirit. You know why you get in trouble? You know why the attractions uh, uh, lure you away? You know why you're up and down and roller coaster in and out and in and out? Because you can't discern the Spirit of God. Because you're not disciplined in the Scriptures. Why do you think God gave us a book if he never wanted you to live by it, read it, and, and make it a part of your life? Huh? Boy, it got real quiet right there. Huh? But the truth of the matter is, you get in trouble because you haven't disciplined yourself in the Scriptures and you don't know how to discern the Spirit. Let me help you something. 
The Spirit of God never speaks contrary to the Word of God. Never. And he knows it real well because he pinned it down. Hmm? Hmm? There's a lot of people doing a lot of things, blaming it on the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost don't have anything to do with it because it goes contrary to the Scriptures. The wretch didn't fetch because he had discernment of the Spirit. Can I help you with this? The wretch won't fetch when he learns to deny self. Anybody remember s and Green Stamps? We got some old folks here. What a blessing. I remember when that was a big deal. And you went to the gas station, and you had to get them green stamps so you could get that free stuff at the end, you know. That was the forerunner to having the point systems on your credit cards, you know. I remember when MasterCard came out, I called it Master Charge. Remember that? Hmm. Yeah. You see, when it all first started, it was kind of like the American Express deal. You could charge it, but you had to pay it off at the end of the month. But then people got over their heads. They, could, they, they went out, oh, I can get it now, get it now, get it now, get it now. And then the bill came, oh, I can't pay it now. So then they let you carry it out for 400 years at 50% interest if you want to pay that, you know? Uh, we live in a day and age of instant gratification. We want it right now. We don't care what it costs. I feel sorry. Let me. I hadn't picked on you boys, have I? Charlie's going, oh, no. Uh, I feel sorry for you all. Because when you get to the age where you're going to look for a wife, none of them's going to know how to cook. You're going to have to go to Grandma's house get home-cooked meals, okay? Because they don't know nothing about it. Huh? Charlie? Quit making your mama mad. That's the only home-cooked meals you're ever going to get when you get old. You're going to have to go see mama, okay? Uh, as I'm here to tell you, that's a lost art. Why spend time peeling potatoes, boiling potatoes, mashing up potatoes, putting milk and whatever, butter, and I don't know how to cook, but it's all sounding good right about now. <laughs> and pepper and all that and real potatoes with them. why do all that when you go to McDonald's and have the whole thing in about 30 seconds you know uh, it's all instant gratification why in the world would somebody roll out flour and you know get the, the strawberries to make a strawberry pie or something by the way that, that no baked strawberry shortcake was pretty good the other, or strawberry what a cheesecake was pretty good the other night huh? said that after Friday night service over there at Sid's I said you give me some of that I thought I did pretty good, and Aaron got half the pie. I never seen any. How do you stay so skinny, boy? Huh? But anyway, listen. Why do all that when you can go down and get Marie calendars at the grocery store? Well, see, you're giving up taste, but who cares? You're getting instant gratification. Hmm? You're giving up the love that Grandma and Mama put into making that meal. You're giving all that up. Well, the same thing's happening in our churches. We want instant gratification. We don't pray. We don't read the Bible. We don't think about God all day. We will live our day, do all that we do, rush into church. Uh, we expect the singers to be on point. Uh, we expect the man of God to entertain us and have something that makes us feel good about our miserable lives. Uh, then we rush right out. We don't do business with God. Uh, 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 we just want to uh, say, well, we went to church, uh, 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 but we've not learned to deny self. Sometimes you've got to stand still and know that he's God. Let me help you with this. In Joshua chapter number 5, Joshua is looking over Jericho and he's thinking, how in the world are we going to take that great city? And he looks behind him and there's the angel of the Lord. By the way, you've heard me say this many a times. Anytime in the Old Testament, when you find the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus himself being manifest in the Old Testament. And Joshua said, are you for them or are you for us? He said, Neither. I'm for the captain of the host of the Lord. Right. Let me help you with something. Jesus isn't for you. He isn't for the one next to you. He's for his glory. Right. Jesus didn't come to do his will. He came to do the will of the Father. Right. It's always about the glory of God. 
And see, uh, uh, you've listened to Joel and Joyce Myers and Jimmy Swagger. He's back on TV. It kills me. Well, you, you listen to all them tell you how great you are and how wonderful you are and you plant a seed and God's going to give you a thousand seeds and all this stuff and you listen to all this junk and you hear how wonderful you are and that God's going to take care of you and God uh, 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 lives his whole existence just to meet your needs and do good for you uh, and to give you all your pursuits and all that that sounds like, kind of like the doctrine of the devil by the way hmm? no God's always for his glory we were created for his glory not the other way around and see you won't fetch the allurements of the world when you learn to deny self it's not what's best for me it's what's best for my Lord mm -mm. thought about this the wretch didn't fetch how do I keep from fetching get a desire to see sinners saved used to be a time folks come to church they had a burden to see somebody get saved I know y'all think I'm crazy, you think I'm old, but I remember, I remember a day if somebody didn't get saved about every week at church, people were in the altar begging God, Lord, is it me? Am I the one hindering the Spirit of God? You know why they'd pray that way, Brother Ron? Because they'd brought sinners with them. They'd prayed sinners to come to church, and they was praying to get them to God. You get a desire to see folks saved, guess what? You won't go chasing after every attraction the devil's got. Wretch didn't fetch when he has a delight for the sanctuary. I'm so proud of you being here tonight. I desire to be in church. That's a blessing. When you've got a desire for the house of God, you won't fetch after all that stuff out there. The devil does everything in his power to try and duplicate what we're experiencing. He wants to imitate the things of God. But you can't duplicate the things of God because he's not God. Maybe this will help you. You have arrived. You're at the house of God. It doesn't get any better than this. It's wonderful. huh? get to hear songs. You understand the words. And they're all about Jesus. Uh, you get to be around a crowd where you're accepted. huh? You, you don't have to worry about what pronoun to use. I mean, it's, it's all good. People love you. You say, uh, people love me. Yeah, even you, they love you. You say, well, you don't know where I came from. Don't matter. You've been to Jesus. That's all only thing that matters. They love you. And even if you haven't been to Jesus, they still love you, and they want you to get to Jesus. Huh? They don't get any better in the house of God. I don't know if you've seen that special on Discovery Plus. This will help some of you all. They used to get mad at me when I get on contemporary Christian music. Watch that Hill song, three series. There's three episodes on Discovery Plus. You watch and see how these, these window washing churches are manipulating people, destroying people, using music and using the air conditioning systems and using everything to destroy people's lives. There are people who are now suicidal because they've been in those things. They bought in hook, line, and sinker to find out it was empty. Hmm. their lives are messed up they've been made twofold the child of hell they're so bitter you take an act of God if you ever see them walk into church and get right with God hmm. boy the wretch don't fetch when he has a delight for the sanctuary let me say this I'll be done the wretch don't fetch when he has a disdain for Satan uh, maybe you don't know this anybody here know this I hate Chinese food has anybody in here ever seen me in a Chinese restaurant stand up anybody seen me in a Chinese restaurant let me help you you won't I have a disdain for it my family eats it not in front of me Jordan brought it in the house one time. I made him take it downstairs. I said, get that junk out of my house. It stinks. I have a disdain for it. Josh, you want to eat cat? Go ahead. I ain't eating cat. I ain't watching you eat cat. I have a disdain for it. There are some of them animals that wasn't in that sheet that God told Peter to rise and eat. A cat and a dog ain't one of them. 
You can go ping, pong, pong, ping all you want and eat that junk. I ain't eating it. <laughs> ain't happening. He eats a lot of it. That's why he's that big. Cat blows up on you. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, I have a disdain for You probably eat it, don't you? You eat everything. I yeah, I know you do. You, you'd, you'd run over a rat and pick it up and eat it. I've seen you. Still warm, yeah. He is, man. He'd lick, he'd lick the inside of a garbage can lid. I swear he would. He's, 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 a, he's a goat. Uh, you're not going to see me at a Chinese restaurant because I have a disdain for it. I really do. I did just something about all that, looking at that, I thought, I'll starve. Somewhere somebody's got a Swiss roll. I ain't eating that junk. I ain't, I ain't eating it. It's not happening. Never. So if you got hungry enough, nope, you don't know me. No, I'd eat my shoe leather before I'd eat that stuff. Put a little barbecue sauce on it, you can get it down. Uh, Charlie Chaplin did. If he did it, I can do it. Huh? I have a disdain for it. When we have a disdain for sin, we'll run from it. When we have a disdain from Satan, we'll run from him. Hmm? The problem is, is we kind of like sin sometimes. We let that wretched man rise up. He likes sin. We listen to him. Huh? And if you're not careful, the devil's slick. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to beguile people. He's subtle. And the best thing to do is never give him an ear. Run from him. You know what the best way to do when he shows up? Just run to Jesus. Because the devil's going to leave you alone when he gets to looking at Jesus. Because see, if you run to Jesus and he's after you, he's going to look up and sooner or later he's going to see Jesus. And he's going to leave you alone. The sheep that always gets eaten by the wolf is the one that's the farthest from the shepherd. I highly recommend just staying close to the shepherd. You have a disdain for Satan, you won't run down that path, friend. Listen, I hate the devil. I hate what he does to families. I hate what he does to young people. I hate what he does to church people. I hate what the devil does to folks. I, 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 just, I just hate it. And when you get that way, you won't be as quick to run and fetch what he throws out there. He's always trying. And he's slick. He'll come at a different angle. Just get to where you disdain him. Listen, I throw off on Joel and Joyce and all them. I can't watch them. I can't turn that mess on because it grieves my spirit because I know they're misleading people and people are going to die and go to hell. I can't watch that stuff. You say, oh, you're narrow-minded. I am. About as narrow as that book right there. But I can't watch that because it grieves me. And if you get to where the devil and his crowd grieves you, you won't fetch what he's throwing out there in front of you. So let me ask you this. Do you really know what you are? Do you know what you're capable of? See, outside the grace of God, we're all just as as anybody else there's nothing you can't do outside the grace of God is there areas of your life that the devil's got something shiny and he throws it out there and you just fetch after it my dog he's he's a smart little dog but he's dumb all I got to do is Hide a squeaker somewhere and squeak it, man. He's all over the place looking for that thing. Well, the devil does some of us that way. Uh, uh. Say, how do you handle it all, preacher? You get in a book. You stay on your knees. You fall in love with Jesus. You spend every opportunity you get talking to Jesus. And you let Jesus develop himself in you. And you let that inner man get stronger than the outer man. Then, my dear friend, You'll be the rich that don't fetch. Let's all stand.
Brother Ray come get a song of invitation. Maybe the devil's been having his way with you. Well, maybe you need to come and ask the Lord to help you with that. Maybe tonight you just need to come tell the Lord you love him. Maybe tonight you're here, you're not in the will of God. You need to get in the will of God. You ought to come. Maybe you're here tonight and you're lost. Why don't you come? We'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. The folks are getting in the altar and doing business. God spoke to your heart. You mind the Lord. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Even the old wretches that we are, you still loved us, gave your life, shed your blood for our sin, rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave to secure our future. Well, Father, I pray you just speak to hearts. Lord, I pray for somebody lost, you'd convict them, draw them to an altar of repentance. God, I pray for somebody cold and indifferent on God, they'd get right with God. I pray for the choice of saint of God, you'd help them. Lord, we all wrestle with this. That outward man, Lord, he can have his way with us if we don't yield to you. So help us, Lord. Bless these thy people. Bless this invitation now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.